Hi, this is Amy Mayer with Fried Technology, and I'm here today to catch you up on any changes that have happened to Google Classroom since last time you took a look at it, and really to get you started with Google Classroom if you have not used it before. So the first thing I'd like you to do is navigate to classroom.google.com. Now, if you are using the Chrome browser, and you have opened a new tab, you can use this waffle that's in the top right hand corner of your Chrome browser and you'll be able to find Google Classroom right inside here if you were logged into your school district account. It should be in this top section right here, but otherwise you can go to classroom.google.com. Remember you can also use Google Classroom on your phone or tablet device. So we're going to walk through two sides of Google Classroom. The first side we're going to take a look at is the teacher side. So we're going to be creating a class today and we're going to be adding an assignment today and we'll take a look at how to get students into our classroom also. So the first thing that we're going to do as a teacher is click on this plus symbol in the top right hand corner and we will create a class. We're going to give our class a name. Uh, if you want you can add a section and subject and room but those are not required. So I'm going to call my class today learning to use Google Classroom 101 and then after we get this all set up I'll join it as a student so we can take a tour and see what that looks like. So our new classroom is up on the screen here and let's just examine this for just a minute. Um, here are some important parts of our Google Classroom. One important part is the class code. We'll be using that to join this classroom from our other account that's going to be a simulated student account. Uh, here's a place where I can share announcements or uh, web links or all kinds of other stuff like that to my students. On the classwork page, this is where we're going to create and organize our assignments and topics. Uh, people is where we're going to see which teachers are in our classroom. If we want to be able to share assignments with other teachers and have them be able to repost our assignments into their classrooms, we're going to add them as co-teachers to our Google Classroom and that's going to give them the rights that they need to be able to reuse our assignments. And then we'll see all of the students who are joined to our classroom right here in the student space. And then on the grades tab is where we will see grading information for each of our students, see our grade book, all that kind of stuff. So before we do anything else, let's go ahead and go into this gear in the top right and let's check some settings on our new Google Classroom. If you're just getting setting, getting set up with Classroom, what you want to do is probably get a Classroom all perfect just like you want it and then copy it a few times so that you can get a class for each group of students you teach. And that's what we always recommend. Create a Google Classroom for each new group of students you teach. Um, since you can easily reuse assignments amongst Google Classrooms, it doesn't make a lot of sense to dump all of your kids into one classroom. Uh, that's not going to necessarily save you the work that you think it might. It really turns out to be easier to have them in separate classrooms. So here we go, here's that class code. I'm going to go ahead and reset the class code and the reason why is because it has an ambiguous character in it. I don't know whether that's an L or a 1 or an I. This is a much better class code. It has no ambiguous characters. I'm definitely going to be able to join this classroom. On the stream, if my students are not used to learning online, this is a new experience for them, I will change this temporarily to only teachers can post or comment. This is going to keep unwanted discussions from going on while I may not be monitoring this Google Classroom that everyone would be able to see. Um, I'm going to leave these settings alone and I'm going to come down to grade calculation. What I would recommend that you do is make this match uh, your grade book. So you have a student information system and I would make these categories and this grading information match whatever is in your grade book. This is just an example that is uh, close to what is a typical um, grade calculation. So normally, especially at secondary, grades are weighted by category and there are usually two to three categories. So I'll set mine up with daily quizzes and test just so you can see what that might look like. You can of course create more categories, have fewer categories. Um, like I said, I would just make it match. Once you get finished, go ahead and save this page and let's go back 
to the classwork page. The first thing I would recommend you do here is think about an organizational structure um, and create some topics. So I'm going to create a topic up here called materials. And this is going to be a place where I can put things that are going to be needed on an ongoing basis, like links to textbooks, things like that. Um, I'm going to create a, another topic here that's called assignments. Uh, another way that you might want to do this, you might want to do by the nine weeks you're on, so second nine weeks, or the unit of study you're on. For our purposes, we're not going to have that much uh, content in our class, so we'll just do assignments and materials. And I want to keep my materials at the top, so I can click and drag that back to the top. Let's start with creating a material so you can see what that particular asset is like. Let's call this. Um, uh, let's say it's important website. So maybe there's a website that's important to your students that they're going to be using frequently. This OWL website from Purdue is one I used all the time as an English teacher. So I've navigated to this website. Uh, I want to think about what page I'm directing students to. I'm going to click one time up there and hold down Control and press C on my keyboard to copy that. And now I'll go back over to my class and I'm going to use a little paper clip at the bottom to add a link. And then I can add as many other materials here as I want. If I have a PDF, for example, I can upload that as a file. I can also create materials from Google Drive right through here. So um, I could add really all my important websites right here. So this determines what topic we're going to post it under. We're going to leave it under materials. And this determines which students are going to see the materials. So if I have a all of my students who are in my class here, I can say these are the links I want these students to use, but other students maybe I don't even want to see these links. So I can go ahead and post this material now so you can see what it will look like. And there's our important websites underneath materials. If I want to edit this later, I can go back and change it and save it again. So this can be kind of an ongoing growing list. I don't have to put everything all at one time. All right, most importantly, we want to learn how to get assignments to our students in the Google Classroom. So what I've done is I have gone to Google Drive and I've created a document in Google Drive. And this document I called My First Assignment in Google Classroom. I added some GIFs to the document. Of course, that's not necessary, but I just wanted you to see that you could. So this is just a Google Doc that has a lot of directions in it, and we'll just use this as a mock assignment. So when we go over to our classwork page, let's go ahead and create an assignment. And we're going to look really carefully at all of the settings before we um, click Assign or some of the other options before we move away from this page. All right, this is going to be called First Assignment. Um, if our students are truly working remote, we want to be really specific in this section right here. So we want to write out our instructions. So I've written some directions here, and now I'm going to add my file. Remember, I created it in Google Drive, so I'll use my paper clip to add it from Google Drive. And since I've just made it, it should show up really easily in my recent files, which it does. So I'm going to click on it, and then I'll click Add. So now I have to determine what will my students be able to do with this file. I don't want them to just see it. I don't want them all to be editing it at the same time. This is an individual assignment, so I'm going to choose this option, which is make a copy for each student. Over here, I'm going to determine what category this will be in. I'm going to call it a daily assignment, which students it will go to. In this case, all of my students will see it. I want to determine a due date if that matters for my purposes. Uh, if this should change later, like if I see my students haven't had enough time, they need more time, I want to try to remember to come back in and change the due date if I've set one. Otherwise, it will say that everyone's papers are late, even if verbally I've told them they have more time. Um, this is going to determine where it's going to go on the classwork page, so we're going to put it in the assignments topic. And then if I want, I can create a rubric that goes along with my assignment. So for today, I'm just going to go ahead and click Assign for the sake of the link of this video. 
For future reference, I do want you to know that you can also schedule this assignment to post later, save it as a draft, and uh, you can also post it to multiple classrooms if you would like to. That's this button right here. For now, we have posted the assignment into our Google Classroom, and now I'd like us to go and take a look at what this looks like from the student's perspective. In order for our students to join our classroom, what they're going to need is this class code. So I'm going to go ahead and display this class code and I'll copy it because I'm going to move over now to a Gmail account where I'll be joining this classroom as a student. So I've started out the same. I've navigated to classroom.google.com. And now when I click the plus sign, I'm going to click join class instead of create and I'm going to paste in my class code. Your students can do it exactly the same way. They'll paste in the class code that you give them and click join. Now that I've joined the classroom as a student, you can see that things are slightly different. I still have three of those tabs, stream, class, classwork, and people. Let's go back and look at it as a teacher. We see stream, classwork, people, and grades. Notice in our teacher account, we see this gear up here in the top right. And in our student account, we do not have that gear. We can't change the settings. So let's go ahead and navigate to our classwork page as students. And let's go ahead and look first at the materials that we created in our teacher account and then at our assignment. So the materials look like this from my student perspective. When I click on that link, I'm going to open up to the website that we linked in our teacher account and go straight to the page that's linked. Under assignments, we now see this assignment that we just made. And I'll go ahead and click my name, which is what's going to show me my personal copy of this assignment. I can also click view assignment, which will show me the assignment page for this particular assignment and give me my turn in button. If I've accidentally turned it in and I need to continue working on it, I'll be able to unsubmit it. We'll take a look at that in just a minute. All right, here's my assignment as a student and really quickly, I'm just gonna go ahead and change it a little bit so that I can show you how we can monitor students working as a teacher. I'm back in my teacher account again because I wanna show you what this looks like. So let's go ahead and take a look at this assignment from the teacher's perspective. When I opened it as a student, you saw that I was looking at the Google Doc look like this. Let's take a look at what this looks like uh, as the teacher. So I'll click on view assignment right down here. So now I see that one student has picked up the assignment and when I click on this I'm going to be able to look at my student working over their shoulder live and I'll show you this in a split screen that the teacher account is going to be able to watch the student account work live. So on the right hand side, this is the student account. On the left hand side, this is the teacher account. So I'm just gonna type and work over here on the right hand side and you'll be able to watch on the left hand side from the teacher's view, me make these changes and type in this space. If students are working collaboratively, teachers will be able to see multiple students working at the same time through Google Classroom. Uh, this is a place where teachers and students can communicate privately with each other. Um, it's, it's really kind of amazing. So as a teacher, I can look at all of my students working right up here. I can scroll through each student right here. Um, and on this page, I can see, I'll be able to see each of my students work in a little preview window. All right, we're back in the student view and I want you to notice that in the top right, there's a turn in button. So let's pretend something that is inevitably going to happen. Inevitably, a student is gonna click that button and then realize through your help or 
his or her own skills that in reality um, we are not finished with this work. Maybe we did number one and didn't notice that there were nine more questions or things to do. So you'll notice that there's also an unsubmit button. This is what normally happens. The student goes back to the assignment. So I just clicked back over to it. He or she expects to continue working and instead what they see is request edit access they may even click that button which will send you a notification that someone needs to edit their own paper and that's when you're going to let them know that what they need to do is actually click the unsubmit button that's what's going to let me go back to my assignment again and continue working until I'm actually ready to turn in the assignment. Let me go ahead and click turn in so that we can take a look at this from the teacher's perspective now and give this some feedback and a grade. I'm back in my teacher account now and you can see that my one student has turned in her work. So now let's go and take a look at the work. This will not look different to you from watching a student work live. It's just a static paper now because it's been turned in and unless my student unsubmits it, they will not be able to continue working on it. If I wanna know if a student has continued working on their paper, I can always take a look at the revision history, sorry, version history of this file it's called now and see when the last time this paper was edited. I can do that by revealing my menu with this little button up here in the top left and clicking on File, Version History, and See Version History. This will show me every change that's ever been made to a document and when. So um, there's lots of different ways I can give students feedback right here. One of those ways is to click, hold, and drag over some of the student's text and go ahead and use the comment button that will float out to the side to leave a comment. That comment will be tied to text in the document. I can also leave some more global feedback over here to the right. So I'll go ahead and type this and click post so that we can look at it on the other side. I can give my students, uh, student a grade from here if I want to, but let's also go back and take a look at this page, which may be easier to type the grade over here. When I get ready, I can return the paper to the student. So let's take a look at it and we'll go ahead and return it and then we'll take a look at it from the student's perspective. So when I return to Google Classroom as a student, I have this button up here, view your work. This shows me my work all together. Um, I can look at only my work that has been returned if I want to or work that I failed to complete. And when I go and look at my assignment, I can see, you remember where I typed this over on the right hand side of the document. Uh, and then I type this right before I hit return. And then I also can open up my paper as a student and see the comment my teacher has left me. And there's the comment out to the right. As we move over to the grades tab in the teacher view of Google Classroom, you'll see that this looks like a grade book and will probably make a lot of sense to you because it probably looks similar to the grade book that you use. Um, and you can change grades from here. You can grade from here if you want to. You can return work from here. You can go back and look at student submissions from here. Uh, you can even edit these assignment details from right here. So it's really very handy and well thought out. Um, I hope that that helps you get started with Google Classroom. This system is deceptively simple in the best way. I think you can get started using it literally tomorrow. Um, and then you can learn more about it as time goes on and as you experiment with different features. But I think and I hope that that is enough to get you started today. Uh, let us know in the comments if you like this and check out our online courses at Fried Online if you want to learn more about tools like this or if you want to go much more deeply into teaching online. Uh, we have a course coming out in a couple of weeks. Hopefully by the time you watch this video, it's there. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.